Good afternoon guys. Today we are going to be filling up forms of Adobe Adobe Support 864 EZ and in this video I am going to explain who is eligible to use them and who is not. Along with this video I am going to explain how much money you are needing to qualify to be able to petition someone from outside the country. Uh, so if this is your first time please support my channel by liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Without further ado, let's get this video going. Okay, here we are. So this is the form I am talking about. 864AZ and I am going to explain who is eligible to use them and who is not. So we're going to go to the instruction. Call me use form I864EZ. You, me, use form 864AZ if all of the following conditions apply. You are the person who filed or filing form petition for alien relative or a relative being sponsored. Two, the relative you are sponsoring is the only person listed on the form and the income you are using to qualify is based entirely on your salary or pension and is shown on one or more internal revenue service. Now, let's talk about who is not. We not to use the formats. The relative you are sponsoring is not the only person emigrating means if you are sponsoring your wife and you have children along with her, you may not be able to use 864AZ. You have to use Form 864. You may not use this form if you are a joint sponsor. Your salary or pension is not enough to meet the income requirements as set by the federal guidelines. If you are from Alaska and you are petitioning one person and that is automatically including you, there are two person in in the household size. You must be making $27,212 for one person. That's because it's automatically two because it's already included you. But if you are an active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces, you are only needing 21000 income. So that's nicer. Let's go back to the 864AZ form. So now we know who is eligible to use them and who is not. So pretty much you are only going to use 864AZ if you're only petitioning one person. Okay, you start here. I am the petitioner of the family member sponsored on this affidavit. Most likely, yes. Two, information about the immigration you are sponsoring. Let's make it short. If the person you are sponsoring is living with someone, it's not their currently address, but they are using that address, you can put their name. Okay, and then the straight name, the province is Cebu. Zip code and postal code is the same. Let's just go ahead and put that again. And the country is Philippines. And then most likely the person you are sponsoring do not have alien registration number. And if they do, you will put that in here. But a lot of time they don't. If you have online account, you will put that in here. But you don't have to if you don't have it. And also, also most likely you do not have a social security number. So you just leave them blank. Now let's move on to the next page. Information about you so if i am the sponsor this is about me the sponsor so my name is this is my supposedly my address i am from usa so is your current mailing address the same as your physical if it is click yes if not click no and you put your physical address okay you fill this up and then other information the country of the missile usa and then your date of birth january 20 1980 all right and then let's go to the city of town uh your city in the city philippines and if this is if you are from brazil put brazil and your social security you must put that one it's very important then put your alien registration number here. I am a U.S. national. If so, check take the box. And then if you are currently active duty, click yes. If not, no. So information about your household size. Now, some people get so confused about this. If you are petitioning someone, okay, and you're petitioning your spouse, and the form has already put two in here. The This question here, yourself and the person you are sponsoring on this form, is already two but right here it says your spouse if i am petitioning my spouse i cannot put my spouse here because he is already or she is already counted on the question 1.a the total of your household size is two now this is why you need to know how much income 
to be qualified to petition for two household size. Now let's go to the poverty guidelines. So if the total household is two, you must be making at least $21,775. This is in 48 contiguous states, all right? But if you are in Alaska and there are total of two in the household size, you must be making 27212 And if you are from Hawaii and there's total two in the household size, you must be making $25,050. Anyways, let's go back to the form 864AZ. Now you have total of two household size. Let's move on to information about your employment and income. So if you are currently employed, tick the box here and put your current information, name of your employer, my current individual income. Now, how do you know how much is your current individual income? Okay, let's say your income currently, you are making $12 an hour. So that is that is your current. $12 times 2080. Why 2080? There are 2,080 hours in 52 weeks of the year. If you are working 8 hours a day and there are 40 hours a week, that is 2,080 hours and you times that to your hourly wages, which is 12 bucks. And so you are making 24,960. 24,960. That is your current rate yearly if you are making $12 an hour. Now, anyways, let's go back. Have you filed? Click yes. If you have not, click no. But most likely, people are paying taxes in America. So they have filed taxes either jointly or single. Five big questions. I have attached photocopies of transcripts. So if you do not have the copy of your tax return, you can actually request a transcript of your federal income tax return. To do that, you must go to irs.com and then uh, click the request IRS transcript. And you can only request one year at a time, which is I did just now. I, I requested three years for 2018, 2019, and 2020. So now you must attach either your tax or transcript. Take the box. Now you have most recent income. That this is just adjusted gross IRS and 40 AZ. Also the second most recent, which means the the most recent tax year. This is 2020. Let's see 2020, and this is 2019, and this is 2018. So last year, if you already filed your taxes, let's just say you have made last the year prior to that, uh, you made twenty two nine hundred. Then two thousand eighteen, your your income still the same. Nothing really changes. Not very much. So let's go to the sponsor statement. If you have filled up the form yourself. You click, you tick the box, I can read and understand English and I have read and understand every questions and instructions on this affidavit and my answer to every questions. And then you go all the way here, you put in your information, daytime, telephone number and your email. And if you have someone that fill this form for you, you will untick the box you take the box the interpreter which is probably your spouse your parents your sister brother anybody you put their information and you click the box read to me every questions blah 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 and a language in which i am fluent and so if you are filipino you put the language filipino here and you take the box at my request the preparer name in part on the bottom which is the next page interpreters contact information she or he has to sign the papers and she will have to take the box i am not an attorney or accredited representative but have preferred this affidavit on behalf of the sponsor and with the sponsor's consent okay and then the preferer's name their mailing address and their signatures so then uh, the contact also put that in here the preferer's contact but if you did that yourself as a sponsor leave all this thing blank except the sponsor signatures which is number six sponsors contract in page number five of seven so then the bottom here you leave this empty if you are filling this yourself anyways i hope this has been helpful and please support my channel by liking and subscribing if you haven't and thank you for watching aurora's blog bye, -bye.